So with Venn diagrams, remember if I'm interested in uh, looking at the space that represents the event A, okay, then I'm looking at my circle A, okay, so my A circle, so that circle there, so I can shade in that whole space. Okay, likewise, if I'm interested in the space that represents my event B occurring, then I'm shading in the entire space within my B circle, okay? Now, also remember we've got these things called complements, okay? So the complement of A, which is sometimes written as A prime or A with a, a sort of a hat or a dash on top. Here, I'm interested in everything except for A, okay? So we're looking at A not occurring now. So if I look at my uh, Venn diagram here, which represents A, if I want anything that's not there, then I just need to mirror uh, that Venn diagram. So I shade in anything that's not A. So everything that's not in that first Venn diagram up on the top there. So all of that little bit in B and this shaded space around the outside would be the complement of A. Okay, and I'd encourage you to try and do the same for B. Now, remember we've also got these two things, one here called the union, A union B, and we'll do one down here called the intersection, A intersect B. Okay, now the union, we're talking about A or B occurring. Okay, so we're kind of mushing the A and B Venn diagrams together. So what I mean by that is if you have a look at our A Venn diagram, here, and we have a look at our B Venn diagram here. Well, anything that's shaded between the two, let's mush them together and make one Venn diagram. So we'll shade in all of the one from A, okay, so that's that space there. And then the bit that B's contributing, so this space here. Okay, and that would be A union, that's A or B. Now, when we look at the intersection, we're looking at A and B. So instead of mushing them together and kind of adding them now, we want to look at what they have in common. So if we have a look again at our A Venn diagram and our B Venn diagram, and we see what do these things have in common? Well, they've both got this little shaded bit here. Okay, so they've both got that bit there in common. So that would be the intersection between A and B. Okay, now with these uh, basic sort of revised, we'll take a look at some trickier examples now. Okay, so here, let's have a look at what the complement of A uh, with the union of B might look like. Now before we try and do that in one go, let's break it down into a couple of separate problems. So first, let's take a look at the complement of A, and then secondly, we'll take a look at what B looks like. So the complement of A, we have a look at our A circle, and we go, we want anything that's not inside of that A circle. So we've got this space here, and we've got the bit around the outside. Okay, so we've got all of this room here. Now, if I want to have a look at my B circle, we know that that's just my circle B. Okay, now I want the union between these two things. So remember, the union is kind of where I mush them together. I kind of add them up. Okay, so I take the bit that my uh, not in A is contributing. So my complement of A contributes this bit here. Okay, and my B contributes this bit here. So my final answer uh, to the uh, complement of A in the union uh, with the union of B would be that Venn diagram at the top. Now, what if I wanted the complement of A where it intersects with B? Well, again, let's have a look at our complement of A and our B Venn diagrams that we have. And let's see what these things have in common, okay? Where do they intersect? What's common between the two? And the only bit that's common between these two Venn diagrams is this space here. Okay, so you can see the difference between the union and the intersection with the complement of A and B. We'll look at another example now. So here we're going to try a little question where we kind of see, okay, well, is A prime intersect B prime the same as uh, the complement of A union B? Okay, now the reason that we might want to work this out is because in high levels of um, mathematics, when we try to uh, think about different situations and count different situations, we can think of them in different ways. Okay, so it's really important to be able to think of things differently. Uh, and in this case, see if these are in fact identical. So here we'll do the A prime intersect B prime. And here we'll do the complement of A union B, okay? And I've got some Venn diagrams down the bottom here which we can use to help solve this problem. So first, we'll take a look at the complement of A, and then we'll look at the complement of B, okay? Uh, and then here, we can look at our A union B, 
and here we can kind of see what the uh, complement of that might look like. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll use all of these and this will make some sense as we go along. So first, the complement of A, we want anything that's not in A. So we've got that space there in B and a bit around the outside. Okay, now the complement of B is of course kind of the reverse. We've got that little bit in A there and we've got this bit around the outside. So if we focus on this Venn diagram, where do these intersect? Okay, the only bit that these have in common is this bit around the outside here. Okay, so that's the only bit that these two, uh, these two Venn diagrams here have in common. So we've answered the first part of our question. We know what A prime intersecting B prime looks like. Now, A union B, we know that A union B is this whole space, anything in A and anything in B, okay? So we're kind of mushing A and B together, so we know that one. So if I want the complement, if I want anything that's not in that shaded space, I'm going to need this bit around the outside here. Okay, so we know that A union B and the complement of that, the complement of A union B is just this shaded bit around the outside here. So the answer to our question, are these equal? Well, yes, they are, okay? Both just have the bit around the outside shaded. So uh, we've taken a look at how we can break down these sorts of problems uh, into smaller Venn diagrams and kind of build our way back up uh, and see if these two different types of notation are actually talking about the same thing. Now we'll look at one more example, which is uh, a bit harder. So in this example, I want to have a look at what A prime intersecting B, okay, uh, uh, and intersect our A union B prime. Okay, so we'll see what this looks like. Now we'll break this down into, firstly, we'll find what A prime intersect B is, okay, and on the right, we'll find out what A union B prime is. Okay, and then to break this down even further, we'll look at what A prime looks like, we'll look at what B looks like, and we'll look at what A looks like, and we'll look at what B prime looks like. Okay, so starting from the bottom and working our way up. So A prime down the bottom here, anything that's not in A. So that's this space here and our bit around the outside. Okay, now if I want my B circle, that's my whole of my B circle there. If I want my A circle, I'm looking at my A circle here. And if I want my complement of B, I'm looking at this little bit in A and my bit around the outside here. Okay. Now, if I want to focus, we'll start here and we'll look at where the intersection between these two Venn diagrams is, okay? Where do these intersect? Well, that only happens in this little space here, okay? So that's the only bit that those two Venn diagrams there have in common. And here, if I want the union between these two Venn diagrams, okay, I just want to mush them together. So we'll take the bit that the first Venn diagram, A, uh, is uh, um, bringing, uh, to the party and we'll take the bit that B prime is uh, uh, bringing to the party as well. So we've got that bit there repeated and this bit around the outside. Okay, now the part of my question that I'm looking for right at the very top is I want to see the intersection between these two Venn diagrams here. So what do these have in common? Okay, and it actually turns out that they've got nothing in common. So we've got the completely empty uh, Venn diagram. So our answer is actually exactly as it's drawn on the page, okay, and it's empty. So if we have an example where we're asked to find the probability of this uh, thing happening. It really doesn't matter what the events are, this probability will be equal to zero, okay? Because we're not shading in any space. 